Okay, so we're in the shop today, pouring down rain. Uh, figured to just come in the shop for the day. Uh, doing some cylinder porting today. Uh, porting I do is just basic. I don't do any kind of like complex. I don't do transfers, advance, you know, change the timing on the exhaust and intake. I don't do any of that. I don't modify combustion chambers. I don't deck anything. Uh, what I do on mine, this is a finished cylinder. These are both 372 uh, XPs, just the uh, 50 millimeter uh, standard port job, everything like that, or standard uh, cylinder size. Uh, this one's been cleaned. It's missing a little cooling fin there. Oh well. This one's been cleaned pretty well. There's some. There's still some uh, crud on it here, here or there, but I'll uh, clean the rest of it up. But it's been parts washed and cleaned and everything. Uh, base has been polished. But uh, what I do to mine is a uh, Dremel tool. You got a Dremel tool. You can see it's hooked up just to my Dremel flex uh, spout on it. I use one of these little cutters here, if you can see. Full focus, maybe, probably not. Nah, it's not gonna focus. Just a little cutter. Uh, here's the package for it. Here, just from Dremel. Uh, just a little cutter. Uh, I had somewhere. I had some really good. They were diamond cutters, and they cut through this like butter. And I don't know what happened to them, so I bought these and to do the little bit I had. But, uh, use that. That's what I do for the majority of the cutting with. And then I come back in with a little grinder. It's a little tapered triangle. Grind off of it. Uh, just kind of smooth everything up. And then I go in with a buffing wheel. Buff everything real good. And, uh get that kind of cleaned up and then I go back in and kind of feel over make sure I don't have any real big rust spots. This is the finished cylinder. Uh, what we have here is all I do to mine is I'll show you what I'm working on here. So here's the cylinder. You can see the wall here on the skirt. See how far that is up? Now come over. Well, Set these up here so they set up right. So you can see the skirt on that one there. If you can see, see how high that is. Come over to this one. That's what you cut out and pick them back up. You can see how high that is there. On the the one on the right, how high the skirt is. You come over and you grind all that down. Uh, this is finished. You can see both sides ground down, polished, everything. Uh, when you do this, you want to make sure where the base is here, where the base casket goes, you want to make sure you grind the skirt down just a little bit below the base. Don't go way down into the ports here or anything, because that'll be too much. Just a little bit past the base here uh, is all you want to go. What I do is I go in, grind it down, uh, grind down just on one side all the way down make sure you keep you know your profile and everything to the cylinder how it was originally you, know, you see here here's the stock one just keep it ground down just like it is all along the cylinder but I grind mine down to the depth I want get it all set and then I just grind all the way across and you gotta take out a pretty fair amount of material uh, I'm doing a little itty bitty ones the diamond ones I had were you know, yay big, and it went quick, and I'd use the little ones just for finishing up. But, uh, you can see both sides are ground down. So I grind it down, and then what I do is usually blow it out real good. Uh, I go in with my little grinding wheel, grind all this down, make sure it's, you know, fairly flush. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but nice and fairly smooth, and not real lumpy and everything. And then I go in and just kind of, on the inside here, because this is where the cylinder will run, you want to make sure it's smooth, make sure it's not tearing any big chunks of chrome off. I just bevel this right here where I grind. I just bevel that just a little bit, not a bunch. Bevel up here, up here, and then on the other side, 
uh, where the transfers are, bevel that around, just so that way it's nice and smooth. You know, I can run my finger along that and this root and just smooth as can be. Same way, this is one I'm working on here. I got this one side done. I mean, you know, if I, this one's done, I can feel it just nice and smooth. You can look in it and see it's not all scored up and everything and uh, just nice and smooth. Make sure you're not getting in with you can see kind of right there. I don't know if you can see or not. Right there, you can kind of see the little scuff marks I got. Uh, that's okay. Don't get in the cylinder. You know, you don't want to be scuffing the cylinder. You can scuff the base a little bit because you got your gasket. Uh, what my saw will be is I'm going to put these. Uh, let's see. This one here is going to be built into a new 372. I'm going to build another one at some point. And so this will have the ported cylinder on it. This one here was a spare cylinder I had. The piston was toasting it. It uh, piston was shot in it. I don't remember what piston it was, but uh, the cylinder is still good. Um, so I saved this cylinder. This will just be ported. I'll have it for a spare. Uh, just the same. You know, and look at them until they're the 50 millimeter. And just the same old 50 millimeter standard Husqvarna cylinders. Uh, this one though I'll just keep for a spare if I ever blow something up or maybe sell it someday to something or test saw maybe put it on I might convert my 365 to a 372 put 372 piston and cylinder and all that on it have three three 372s I don't know just have a 365 case on one uh, it just depends on what I feel like but uh, I might even go for this other 372 I'm kind of thinking I'll just rob uh, if I was going to build the other one I'd uh, rob the clutch cover, um, handlebars, sprocket, uh, what else, tank, or actually not, well yeah, I would get the tank, uh, and some other stuff off the 365, and I'd have to go and have to buy an unlimited coil, I steal the muffler off the 365, I'd have to put an unlimited coil, new main bearings, new seals, um, what else? Um, some throttle trigger parts, and I think I got all the screws I need. Uh, and then I'd like to get a set of full wraps for it, make it another pro saw. But uh, yeah, so at some point I might do that, but just for now I'm not going to. But uh, this cylinder here I'll just keep for spare, do something with. Uh, maybe use it for a test one, but. Well, my 372, I'm going to take my cylinder off my 372 I just rebuilt, and uh, I'm going to port it and uh, just cut these out. This will give you a little bit of power gain. What When I get done with my 372, it will have a dual port muffler, unlimited coil. Uh, I will eliminate the base gasket when I port the cylinder. I'll take it off, eliminate the base gasket, just put silicone on. Uh, have a little bit of a ported uh, cylinder on it um, and then I'll have an A2 sprocket and then I want to try to build a velocity stack for it uh, I'm gonna don't know how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna see if I can get one something kind of made up or a green weenie or something like that but uh, I will be doing that to my 372 here one of these days when I get some time when I don't need it uh, I'll go and do it and uh, I just figured I'd do these but uh yeah that's how i do mine and uh, another thing you can do this is just a basic i mean anyone can do this right here another thing you can do you can grind off on the bottom of the intake side you can grind this off that'll change your timing a little bit that's kind of more specialty there's some measurements and everything involved in that uh if you don't get it right you can your saw will run bad uh so that's kind of a more complex you can read up on that more if you want but uh, this is just a basic anyone can do it and it'll give you a power gain from it but this side's all done uh let's see this side here needs to be done uh i don't know if i could film and everything at the same time i might be able to do something here uh We'll see. We'll uh, 
change out my bit here to the cutter and uh, like I said it uh, so I'm gonna have to get some different find my diamond bits or get some different ones because it used to go way way quicker I could have it done in just a little bit of time and now it takes a lot longer and everything which today it's okay because it's raining I don't have anything to do but uh, I just use the flux uh, nozzle or not nozzle but end on here on my Dremel it works better you can get in kind of harder reach areas versus just having a straight Dremel but uh, we'll fire this up here and just do a little bit and kind of let you see how it's done uh, and everything but When you first go through the top, it'll be really hard to get through. Uh, it just takes a few seconds. Once you get down past the top, it'll go a lot easier. You can see it starting to throw some pieces out. So now we kind of got a hole cut in there, you can see. Now we'll just kind of go to the side here. We'll go to the left. It's nice and slow. Right along to the left. You can even turn your speed up a little bit more if you want. That's wide open. Knock it back down here some. And go down to the bottom some now. That gives you a general idea, kind of, of how I do it. Uh, if you talk to you know professional port guys, they'll have way different ways of doing it and everything. It'll be way different, but that's kind of how I do it. I don't have money to invest into a big, you know, Dremel system to port it, and I will get some different bits though, uh, or find my diamond ones, but. Uh, Diamond ones work good, and then carbide uh, works really, really good. Uh, the diamond ones I had, they weren't really a cutter. They were more of a, they were actual grinder. They did do good in this, though. Uh, what I want to do is get the diamond grinders and then get the uh, carbide cutter, get a carbide cutter. Uh, that'll make short work all this, and I don't know, maybe I'll experiment some with some transfers and uh everything like that but uh that's how i do it and you can see here I'll bring it a little bit closer you can see how i went down and it needs to go down i don't know probably another 16th of an inch or so and just you know right below the base is where you're gonna go don't go too far down just you know nice and right below the base and but make sure when you're done too to give this a good parts washer you know run it in your parts washer blow it out and everything and make sure it's you know 
really nice and clean, you know, like that one is. There's nothing in it. I've washed it once and blown it out about three times, so it's nice and clean. But that's how I do mine, so thanks for watching.